Shalom, 12 tribes of Israel, and all those seeking the truth. I want to give all the praise and the glory to the Almighty, the powerful strength of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the Son of the Most High. In this video, I want to go into the truth about what the kingdom of heaven is and who the kingdom pertains to. I want to show and prove that the kingdom of heaven, according to Christianity, is a complete fairy tale. Is when you die and you go to heaven for your good deeds here on planet earth or for whatever sinner's prayer or whatever it is you did in your religion that you die and you go to heaven that's a complete manipulation of the truth they even lie about the rewards of the Bible not only do they lie about the entire Bible they lie about the rewards of the Bible it's, it's definitely not a fairy tale land where you go to get to see your dead folks that have passed on before you um, I'm going to show and prove that it is a rulership it's a rulership over the planet, which has been broken down in the prophets as well as in the New Testament. So I want to go into a few precepts here and a few scriptures that completely show and prove that this Christian manipulation is a, a, is a complete fairy tale. And show and prove exactly what th this represents in Daniel's dream and Nebuchadnezzar's, uh, excuse me, Nebuchadnezzar's dream and uh, Daniel's vision. It's a, it's a full explanation of exactly what the kingdom of heaven is. So I want to go into that today, as well as a little bit of the one-third uh, the one -third and the 144,000. I want to show and prove that the kingdom pertains to an elect people, an elect chosen nation of people who have been selected to rule over the world in righteousness forever. Um, it, because of the manipulation and the deception of what the kingdom of heaven is through religion and society, if you say that the kingdom of heaven pertains to 144,000, 12,000 from the 12 tribes of Israel, that it pertains to the Israelites, it, it comes across as being racist or hateful, but it know, it's the truth. It's, it has nothing to do with being hateful or, or racist. As I have no hatred for no man because of what nationality they're brought into this world as. That to me doesn't justify hatred at all. It doesn't, like, just because you come from the whatever nation of people is other than my nation doesn't constitute hate within me. But it's the truth. It's the truth. The kingdom is, is for the Israelites. It's a rulership. It's a promise that the Most High made with our forefathers. And just like in this world, you have a power system that revolves around what is known as an elite bloodline of families, although they're in wickedness. They rule the world in unrighteousness and wickedness. It's a, basically an imitation of what the Most High has set up for the real elect bloodline. Like you have a, they say a 1% of the people that rule over the world that have all the wealth and the rest of the world is just fighting for crumbs. When my research, I found that the real power structure and the real bloodline of families that rule over the world actually consists of I think a 1% of the 1% so it's a very few people and here in this image it says in their opinion they are entitled to rule over the rest of us because they are, are the direct descendants of the ancient gods and consider themselves royal and it has a list of the families you can go online you can go on YouTube and you can look up the elite bloodline families and you'll find even the names of some of these people. Some of the well-known ones are uh, the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers. You can see even images of some of the people who the, are the heads of some of their people who actually rule over the world in unrighteousness, complete unrighteousness, and wickedness and oppression. But the, the, Satan can only distort and bend what the real truth is. He can never create his own thing. He can never create so he takes what the Most High set up and, and he completely distorts it in wickedness. And a lot of these wicked rulers are said to uh, descend from Vlad the Impala, uh, known to the world as Dracula. So it's definitely what they call an elite bloodline of families that rule over the world in wickedness. We're going to show and prove that Christian Christians' uh, interpretation of what the kingdom of heaven is is a complete fairy tale. They lie about the, re the rewards of the kingdom as well as the rest of the Bible. It's a government set up for real. Christianity is just a government stronghold and control over people and keeps away the real truth of the Bible from the Israelites. When shown proof here in Psalms 115 and 16, it says, The heaven, even the heavens, are the most highs, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. 
The dead pray is not the Most High, neither any that go down into silence. But we will bless the Most High from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Most High. Okay, so the heaven, even the heavens, the, 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 the structure above us, the heavens of even the heaven of heavens belongs to the Most High. And he has a heavenly host with him. But the earth hath he given to the children of men. The habitation for man is earth. We go nowhere even after we die. We don't go into the heavens after we die. And here it says, the dead pray is not the Most High. Neither any that go down into silence. So no per nobody's so dead loved ones have gone up into heaven when they died. I've heard Christians say ridiculous things like so and so has passed on and has gone home to be with the Lord. It's just a complete fairy tale and a, a brainwash from the real truth. Here in John three and twelve it says, "If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things?" And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. So no one has ascended up into the skies, not above the, the firmament, or above what the Most High has set up above us. <clears throat> Here in Acts 13 and 34, it says, And it is concerning that he raised him up from the dead. Now no more to return to corruption. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore he saith also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of the Most High, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom the Most High raised again saw no corruption. This doesn't mean that David fell on sleep or had died and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. That doesn't mean that he, he died and went to hell. There's much evidence in the scriptures of reincarnation. So when it says he and saw corruption after he fell on sleep, he basically was brought back into this corrupt world through the rotation of, of basically reincarnation. But he whom the Most High raised again saw no corruption. He wasn't brought back into this rotation who was a man. The Son of the Most High was a man in the rotation at one point, but he, after the Most High raised again, he saw no corruption. He came not back into this world, this corrupt world. What I want to go into is Daniel. Daniel 2. Um, I don't want to go into the entire chapter, but basically Nebuchadnezzar had a dream during his rulership and he was so stressed and troubled over this dream, he was ready to start killing people because they couldn't interpret it for him or bring this, this dream really back to his memory. And it had troubled him so much he was ready to start killing people within his, within his realm. The Most High revealed this thing to uh, Daniel, the prophet Daniel, who was of the captives of Judah, from the tribe of Judah, Daniel. Um, the Most High revealed this thing to Daniel. But I just want to go into a few of the basic things, of, but I don't want to go into the entire chapter and, and what it exactly, um, the whole thing, but it definitely says here uh, the, in Daniel 2 and 28, but there is a Most High power in heaven that Reveal the secrets and make it known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. Okay, so I want to I'm gonna start here down in 31 now. So thou, O king, saw us and behold behold a great image. This great image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass. His legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest so that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them into pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken into pieces together and became like the shaft of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Okay, so this is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. So basically, in the dream, he, he brought back to mind that this was what Nebuchadnezzar's dream was. And he's about to give the interpretation of what this was. This great image with gold head, silver, brass, and iron, and iron and clay. And, this, and the stone cut out without hands destroyed the image. It says, this is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Verse 37. Thou, o, 
O king, art a king of kings, for the Most High of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. So he basically gives him the breakdown of exactly what type of power the Most High hath given King Nebuchadnezzar, which was kingdom, of kingdom, power, strength, and glory, and wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls, was under his rulership. So going into the dream, he explains that the head of gold was a representation of Nebuchadnezzar and his Babylonian empire. Okay, so we're going to go on to verse number 39. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as the iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes part of, part, of, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the Most High of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. That's a very important scripture right here, Daniel 2 and 44. For anyone that speaks outside of the kingdom being left to other people is completely contrary to Daniel 2.44. It's a, a good scripture to have highlighted and in remembrance. And it says, in the kingdom shall not be left to other people. That's, that's the kingdom, basically, he's speaking of is the kingdom of the Most High. Here in 45, for as much as I saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great power hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. So he gave Nebuchadnezzar the interpretation of his dream and the rulerships that were set were to come after Babylon. This is history here. This is his, history that's actually taken place. As I said, I don't want to go into every detail of every empire, but we know for certain that this was a, an image of the future, of the last days. Babylon Empire, the Medo-Persian Empire was the, was the silver. The Grecian Empire was brass. The iron was the Roman Empire. The iron mixed with, in, mixed with miry clay was a divided kingdom, but also had the iron in it, which is the Roman king, Empire. This is all one kingdom. He said four kingdoms. Four kingdoms were set up. And this, as you can see, is a Roman Empire plus a divided kingdom. This is all one. Iron mixed with miry clay, mixed with seed of men. The Roman Empire has a very strong influence over the world. The strongest influence over the entire world still as of today. Mixed with miry clay because it's, it's going into all realms and all kingdoms. Including into what I found out today into China, um, throughout Africa, definitely within Europe and uh, the Western the Western Hemisphere as well. We're going to go further into Daniel 7. Because the Most High about 50, later, 50 years later gave Daniel a vision, which basically was almost the same thing, except in a different form. Here in verse number 2 it says, Daniel spake and said, I saw in, the, in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea, and four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld to the wings thereof were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man and a man's heart was given unto was given to it. And behold another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it and there and they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I beheld and lo another like a leopard which had Upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, 
and devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and it had ten horns. I considered the horns and behold,